In the Middle Ages, parchment was used to make the pages of books. Parchment was made from the skins of animals. The transition from a fresh skin to a surface suitable for writing was a slow and laborious process. The result was parchment, a smooth and durable material that could last over a thousand years. Before parchment could be written on, it had to be specially prepared. First, the parchment was rubbed with pumice powder and then dusted with a sticky powder. These steps made the surface receptive to inks and colors. The whole finished skin was then cut down to the size of the pages needed for a particular book. The vibrant illuminations in a medieval manuscript often overshadow the words on the page, yet the writing of the script was as important as the painting of the images. The tools of a scribe, the person who copied the text onto the page, were simple. Pens, called quills, were made from the feathers of a bird, which were soaked in water, dried, and hardened with heated sand. The scribe carved the quill to a rough point, cut a slit to draw ink down, then trimmed the point to the proper width. Scribes made ink from a variety of materials. Gall nuts, growths found on oak trees, were often used to create a dark black ink. Black ink was also made by dissolving a common carbon substance. Medieval scribes and their patrons prized a regular and elegant script. If a scribe made an error, he would scratch it out with a penknife. An illuminator decorated the pages of the manuscript using paint and precious metals. He began only after a scribe had finished copying the text. Thin sheets of precious metals, like gold leaf, were always applied first. Once the gum base dried, the moisture in the illuminator's breath was enough to make the small piece of gold leaf stick to the page. Then the illuminator brushed away the excess. Each color was made from a vegetable dye or a mineral substance ground up and dissolved in liquid. Once the illuminator applied black outlines and delicate white highlights to the figures and vines, the illumination was finished. After the scribes and illuminators had finished writing and decorating the parchment pages, the manuscript was bound. Groups of folded sheets of parchment, called gatherings, were sewn together with strong linen thread onto flexible supports, such as these narrow leather thongs. The binder then laced the leather thongs along the spine through channels and tunnels, which had been carved into wood boards. The volume was then covered, usually with leather. Without pressure from the covers to keep the leaves flat, parchment expanded and contracted with changes in temperature and humidity. The binding of a manuscript could be decorated with any one of a variety of materials. A manuscript might be covered with leather, stamped or tooled with gold, or covered with silks or velvets. The most elaborate bindings received sculpted decoration made from precious metals. The materials of the binding depended on the wealth of the patron, the type of manuscript, and its intended use.